Karen Sharp. I'm senior lecturer in guitar at the Queensland Conservatorium. I'm an artistic researcher and I'm an active member of CARI and the Queensland Conservatorium Research Collective. And I'm delighted to be here having a chat with Maria Lena um, as part of our Behind the Music series. Hello, so I'm Maria Lena Juntunen. I'm visiting Australia for a week. Uh, I work as a professor of music education at the Sibelius Academy University of the Arts, Helsinki. And I'm very delighted to have a conversation with Karin today. Okay. Um, I would like to ask um, about your interest in, in performance and in teaching young people how performance is different from what they do in the practice room and what your journey has been with that. Oh, that's a big question. Um, I, uh, I, I started as a, or I, I studied music education, so I've never really was trained to be a performer. But I was performing music when I was a child, and, and finally that took me actually to performing Cuban music, some jazz, uh, some classical music as well. So I have a kind of wide background, musical background in performing. But I really got interested in like particularly about performance when I, I taught this course of performance at the youth department at the Sibelius Academy. Uh, this, this is a, like a program for students between the age of 13 to 19 mainly. And um, uh, I, I was actually, after my studies to be a music teacher, I studied so-called Dalcros pedagogy in uh, first in the Institute, Sack Dalcros Institute in Geneva, and then also in Carnegie Mellon University in, in the USA. And um, that approach is really like, if you could say, it's embodied approach to musical learning. So we did a lot of exercises uh, through movement, so uh, to to improve coordination, balance, um, movement skills in in general, but also breathing exercises with movement, and also some nonverbal interaction activities that kind of uh, relates to trauma and acting. Based on the feedback from the students, what they really got out of this practice was that they said they became more connected with their bodies and they started to feel more comfortable in, in moving, in, in bodily interaction, and also more comfortable you know, in being looked at. Because mm. that's, that's a big thing, I think, in performance. That's Coming so from the practice room and then you <laughs> suddenly you're on stage and you're, yeah. everybody's watching you. So how comfortable you can feel mm. in that situation. And I think it's... It's, it's quite a lot about feeling like uh, about this body awareness mm -hmm. that you can kind of know your body and feel that you're in control and you're kind of able to lose some muscle tensions if you need to or mm -hmm. feel what your body is asking for. And, and it, when you feel very comfortable in your body, I think you start feeling more comfortable with yourself as well. Mm -hmm. So at least for those young students, it was... It was really a big thing about what they learned about their bodies and feeling comfortable in the bodies and how that relates to their mm. performance. So I think maybe that's that's one kind of angle to, to the performance that I yeah. have. Yeah. I think that's really interesting because a lot of performers have kind of a, a hyper-awareness of their yeah. body. So they're over-aware of their body when they're on stage. And I say this to my students sometimes. If you think about you know, all the muscles you have to move to take a step. Like people are even hyper aware of themselves when they walk on stage before they've even done anything, any performance or, you know, any musical performance. Um, <clears throat> and that kind of hyper awareness is actually really hindering. So it's interesting that through more awareness of the body, you're actually um, enabling people to let go of that hyper awareness and to feel comfortable. Yes, I think there's a difference between be, being aware of the other people seeing you mm. than the body awareness that you have like from inside. From inside, exactly. Yes. And yes. If, you, if you feel very comfortable with your body and you know that you're in control and so mm. then, then you don't have to worry about how people see yourself mm. from outside. So exactly. worry about how you be, you know, yeah. 
looking, if you're looking good and, mm. you know, so I think it gives you some kind of confidence yes. in how you are and what you do when it, you, you build it from inside out than yeah. the other way around. Yeah. And I think that we are kind of losing a little bit nowadays because we are so much looked and we will look, pick, take pictures all the time and, and send yeah. them away and uh, look at yeah. other people's pictures. So we are all the time looking at people and that takes our focus away from how we feel in yes. our bodies and about ourselves. Yeah, we think about how we're viewed and how we're perceived rather than what we can just be, basically. Right. Yeah. Right. And I think um, there is also a little bit of a layer of, um, you know, when young people are going through music education anywhere in the world, um, <clears throat> there is, of course, um, assessment. Um, there's assessment yeah. of their performance, there are competitions, there are auditions, and all of those things um, are related to um, being, being evaluated. Right. And that yes. sense of being evaluated um, and that not becoming the whole thing of what you're doing on stage is quite tricky. And so, you know, um, for those of us lucky enough to play enough concerts that any kind of evaluation is kind of secondary, um, that's great. But for a lot of students, they don't have that experience. And, um, and I think it's really one of the really important things is for students to have performance experiences that are not evaluated, that yes. are just experiences of performing. And they can be, you know, out in the public or amongst, amongst their peers, but that sense of not evaluating or only really um, <clears throat> pointing out what's good. Um, not It's not about pretending that it's all great and all perfect, but it's about saying that was really good and you did that well. I think that's a really important element um, just generally. So my interest has been, um, first and foremost, um, when I was a teenager, I had really massive stage fright and I became interested in how to overcome that. And I looked at... Um, sports psychology <clears throat> as a primary kind of focus and a primary source of techniques mm -hmm. for overcoming stage fright. Um, and it's interesting what you said about, about having that control because a lot of the techniques that I came across that athletes use are about regaining control. So the fight or flight response, which we all know takes us completely out of control and becomes an involuntary response. Um, has an opposite response called the relaxation response, which can bring us down to whatever is the right level of kind mm. of arousal for yeah. us for any situation. Um, so that's usually actually the first thing that I, that I um, <clears throat> teach people is the relaxation response to give them back that sense of control. Um, and I think that's, that's a really interesting mm. parallel because mm. that lack of control is probably the thing that's most scary to yeah. people on stage and um, and how you approach that obviously can come from different different angles and it's the regaining of control however you do that that gives people added confidence so that obviously is something that we yeah share maybe from slightly different angles yes. but maybe not that different actually yeah. Yeah. yeah and I think it's also what is related to control is like how how integrated you experience like yeah. how because well, the theoretical uh, kind of angle, the perspective I come from is really embodiment that that um, argues that we are really, in all our actions and perceptions, we are really, that the mind, body and emotions are inter integrated. And I think it's also like if you experience that integration, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the mind and body and, and emotions are the one and they are like friends with mm -hmm. each other, yeah. I think that gives a lot of safety yes. as well. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, I mean, with my stage fright stuff, the, st the things that I always talk about are the conscious mind, the subconscious and the body mm, yeah. and getting those three all uh, having awareness of all three and being able to, to know that actually you are the driver of all of them. Yeah. Um, so that's another really... Um, interesting parallel I think and it's interesting just to think about how that isn't necessarily something we do as a standard thing in music education we teach people to play an instrument really well yeah. so there's this huge I suppose physical focus yeah and then um, 
there's all the understanding of the music and the form and the history. So that's a mental focus. And then how do the emotions fit in with that? What do you, how do you think that works with embodiment? Yeah, I think it's, it's, um, it's how we think about music. I, I just recently read something that Nicholas Brown wrote about thinking about music, not, not, um, not as something that would form or it's like a um, intellectual thing, but more as a way of initiating and influencing relationships between people. Mm. And that takes out like this music as interaction and music as interceptive experience. Mm. And I think it's, it's quite a lot of, so um, influences how, how we think about music and how we think about performance. I agree that in, in the universities and conservatories, we teach students to, to perform some, something for someone and then mm. to be assessed. And I think that kind of guides in that direction, which can cause a lot of anxiety. And, mm. and uh, so if we maybe could teach them about music as interaction and maybe mm. also change our assessment practices mm. differently mm. and, and uh, yeah. And maybe involve the students in the assessment and not have this coming from outside. And uh, yeah. also the vocab vocabulary that we use when assessing, mm. I think, makes a difference. Mm. But I would be interested in asking you, because I, I'm really interested in this uh, thinking about performance as an, more of an interaction mm -hmm. than, than me performing something for, for somebody to receive. Mm. So how much do you focus on feeling the audience of responding with the audience and uh, are you able to do that or I mean how, how you feel about that? I, I think it's really important I mean for me the role of the of the musician and I say for me <laughs> the role of the performer on stage if, if we're talking about a solo performance the role of the performer on stage is to um, <clears throat> be as open and authentic as possible to what happens in the room. They've prepared, they've mastered their instrument, they've understood the music, they've allowed themselves to um, explore the music, not only you know, intellectually, physically, but also emotionally and perhaps spiritually in some way, so that it really, it becomes meaningful to them. Mm. Someone else might have written it, 200 yeah. years ago, but it means something for them. Mm. And I think that's a, a really important starting point, actually, before you go on stage. And when it means something to you, then to be free to allow it to <clears throat> become what it is in the room and to be as open and authentic as possible. And I think the extent to which the performer is in touch with themselves yeah. and is authentic is the extent to which the audience can be moved by the music. Yeah. The audience doesn't care about the performer. Mm. The audience cares about themselves. Right. Um, and so when we're moved, really moved in a an, in an concert, it's because someone has shown us ourselves. Yeah. And so I think that's a really important thing that I always try to, to teach students, that it's actually not about you, it's about it's actually about everybody in the room and mm. everybody having an experience that you're sharing. You as the performer are facilitating the mm. experience, um, but you can't dictate how people are gonna feel, first of all. So you see some people, when you start teaching people about expression and communication, you see them really pushing right. and really wanting to make people you know, this is a sad piece, you've got to feel, so I'm going to play it really <laughs> sadly. And people are like, oh, I don't want to hear that. So it, it's, it's a, just about if they have an authentic experience, an emotional, maybe spiritual experience with the music, and they have enough technique and ability that that experience is flowing and free, mm. then I think the audience has an experience with them. Yeah. And... I mean, I think there are different audiences. And you know, sometimes people, and it's different culturally as well, in different countries, people respond, you know, like if you play in South America, people just straight away, you feel <laughs> like you, you sit down and people are just all over you. They're just ready to, you know, absorb whatever it is emotionally. 
Um, and then there are other countries where people are more reserved, audience is more reserved, but um, I still feel that the kind of give and take is actually the same across, yeah. you know, in different countries and, and different cultures. Um, yeah. Yeah, and that, that requires to be able to be present, to be here Absolutely. and now, and uh, not to just do something that you have planned no, that's beforehand. Right. And that's, that yeah. can be scary. <laughs> yeah, first. but that, I think that freedom to do something spontaneous comes from knowing that you're able to do this or this or this yeah. and still feel mm -hmm. authentic. Do you agree? Right. Yes, absolutely. I think that's the, as you said, that's the way how you can reach the audience and like, like mm. really uh, reach the emotion, emotions and experiences and make, make a difference. Yeah. And I think you can feel that as audience, if someday is just, if we can say, just performing like yeah. repertoire that the one that she or he has learned, it's different than, than being present and yes. wanting to express something and share yeah. something and be open, be honest. And, mm. yeah. I had um, a wonderful um, acting teacher and director that I worked with called Ani Nimi, and um, he said something to me that... <laughs> has stayed with me ever since. He said, when you walk on stage, it is your job to put the audience at ease. You, it is your job to make people feel comfortable. Now, I did just say you can't make people feel anything, but that idea that when you walk on stage, it's actually not about you. How do I look? How am I walking? Mm. Am I walking strangely? What would this bow that I'm about to do? That's really strange, but actually just, and I get my students to think about if you had to say in words something as you're walking on, what would it be? Mm. And I, I get them to actually say, what would it be? And it can't be, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. I hope I don't stuff this up, oh dear. <laughs> it has to be, hello, welcome. It's lovely that you're here. And I'm so looking forward to sharing this music with you. you know, and I want you all to feel comfortable and involved. And as soon as people even if they imagine themselves saying that, their whole um, feeling and perception of, of themselves on stage changes because it's suddenly not about them anymore. It's about mm. the audience. Yeah, that sounds right. great. How to you agree? Yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> great preparation for performance. I wish I, we could you know, do that more in, yeah. in education. And do you think that what we said before about assessment and... Um, and evaluation and, and the way that we teach people or maybe not teach people you know, about interaction and, and about how to perform. Do you think that internationally, as a music educator, do you think that slowly that landscape is changing? I, I think it is. Um, also because I think performers are um, engaging more with communities like doing commu community music mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and have this not only like do music for us to perform for the audience but to make performances with the people and collaborative projects and I think they then find other meanings for performing mm -hmm. and that maybe changes the education slightly because we have to educate performers for different contexts, so mm -hmm. it's not only about going to the stage, and but it's also going to these communities and mm. uh, to collaborate and interact with people. But also, I think education, as such, is changing or developing. Let's say, yeah. in the sense that uh, we mean uh, understand more about performance and the needs of performance, and mm. I think there are more understanding for for um, not only like musical judgments and the technical judgment, but also understanding the role of in the importance of interaction. Mm. And uh, so mm. I really hope, and I think there are some. Yeah. Uh, well, it sounds like the course you're doing already is, you know, is um, amazingly different to, to what we see um, in, in many institutions. Yeah, but of so. course, traditions change slowly. They do so, change slowly, so. that's true. And, and we have to remember that until I think probably the 1970s, 1980s, the major music dictionaries actually didn't list any names of performers. Well, it was yeah. just, you know, composers, musicologists, critics, right. but no performers. So um, the role of the performer as someone who 
is actually doing something other than just retelling the right. composer's intent that mm. they're actually recreating together yes. with the audience yes. and using themselves and and having allowing themselves to be present yeah. is um is something that we're really that's only really coming into academic sort of writing in the last 20 30 years yes. before that the focus was very much on you know how to interpret music and and all of that you know how to get the technique and all of those things um so i think it's really exciting yeah actually. and i think also because the diversity of musical styles because many many styles in music have that kind of different approach to before yeah, this. And of course. so then the existence of those variety of performance practices as well i think is gradually changing mm. the academia yeah. as well well, I'm happy to say that here at the conservatorium we are doing things um, which I'm happily, I'm happily and very heavily involved in. Um, we start with our first years. We have um, a weekly workshop for our first years called Insights to Performance, where um, the jazz and the classical performance students are together, and um, they have um, we have sort of workshops, interactive workshops, and they play to each other, and it's very much. Not about, you know, did you play in tune? Did you use the right tonguing? Whatever, because they're all together, so they're all mixed up. It's about, did you say something? What is it you want to say as a performer? What do you want to be? What, what is it that you're doing? So we have yeah. um, our, acting, our head of acting come in and work with the students, and we talk about breathing and, and all kinds of things. Yeah. Absolutely. But I'm really happy I had this opportunity to come and discuss with yes. all, the, all the way from Finland. All the way from Finland. <laughs> I'm immensely privileged. Yeah, Lovely. Thank fabulous. you so much. Thank, Thank you, you for visiting us. Thank you.